So before uh, analyzing what are the EU policies on, on family, I think it's good and important to uh, establish a framework and to describe what the, uh, have an overview of the EU situation concerning demography and families. Uh, there are some main features that uh, are notably present at EU level. The first one being the demographic change. We are going through a, an aging of our societies, which is a good thing in itself because that means that there are greater life expectancies, we live more. But that of course has a consequence on the budget, on the, on the pyramid of uh, sustainability on the concern of pensions. So this is the first element that we should bear in mind when speaking about families and demography. A second one is the, the big changes that, are, that families are going through. Uh, I'm thinking of different elements. First one, the women tend to have child later and later. Now we are going to our 30 years. Normally the, the first uh, uh, child is a 30 year that of course has consequences. There's a higher rate of, uh, of separation. So we have now more and more families, new families with sometimes children born from previous marriage. And we have more and more single parents which of course create a problem of poverty. So all these are elements that we should always bear in mind when we are thinking of policies, be it at national level or at European level. And we must really take it in mind both in the way of the moment in which we, we elaborate, we think of these policies, and the moment in which we implement these policies. Uh, speaking about the fertility rate, which is an indicator that tells us if we are able to renew our generations, uh, no member state in the EU is able to achieve the, the ratio, which is 2.1, which would allow us to renew our generation, with the exceptions of France and Ireland that are very close to it. But it must be said that there are big differences among the member states and within member states, both as concerned the, the situation but as well the trends and the policies that member states put in place to face these, uh, these elements. And then of course, needless to say, there's the economic crisis that hit so hardly families and that here hit so hardly as well budgets. And then it makes more difficult for governments, even governments that have a good will to do something for families to then be able to do it properly because they just don't have money. So uh, I would say the, the crisis really affects families in two, in two ways and uh, it's really something we should take on board. Examining the different policies that the s several member states put in place in favor of families, we have been able to identify some elements, some key factors that have made some policies successful, others less successful. And we think that some really important element that makes a, a policy for families successful is the, the focus on the conciliation between the private life, the conciliation and the balance between the private life and the professional life. That is really a main strand of, uh, of these policies. Another second element for us very important is that these measures should be tailored pragmatically to meet parent expectations and children needs. I underline the word pragmatically because too often when we talk about policy families there are ideological BAs that uh, prevent from doing the proper policies and we think that family expects what we want them to expect but that shouldn't be the case. There has been in the past some research that have really made us able to really focus and understand what really family are expecting and we know for example that family would like to have more children than they do actually have. So that's a key element that should be ke keeping on board and that's not always the case. Another element, and of course in a period of crisis is, is even more dramatic, is the, the family poverty and the children poverty. According to some research, 24% of children in Spain are below the line of poverty. That's really dramatic. It's not fair that they pay, they should pay the bigger price for the crisis. So indeed we have seen that policies that have worked much on this, on fighting poverty of, uh, of families and of children have been more successful. Another element is the stability of these policies. Why so? Because when a couple decide to have a child, it's of course a long-term process, it's a life project which will last for decades. And of course they must be sure that the policies that at that moment are maybe in favor of families will last for the next decades and not will just change with the change of government. 
So that's really a focus point. Another one is the universality of such policies. What does it mean? It means that these policies pro-families are really made regardless of the income of the, of the family, and we have really seen in France that this is very important, but are linked to the children, to the number of children, and are kind of regardless of the situation of the family or the parents. That's another important element. Again, some more, I would say, cultural element, but which is very important to us, is the recognition of family and of the value of having a successful life a successful family life. Too often we just talk and think about success like being very rich, like having a very high profile job, but too often we forget that there is as well a successful family life. And that's, I think it's a cultural shift that should happen to really make family at the center of our policies, at the center of our societies. And family, uh, last element, last but not least, is large families. Uh, they have special needs and uh, they have uh, special uh, problems. So really policies should really try to take them on board because indeed large families are not as easy as small families to manage. So indeed the policy maker should really take it in account. These are, I would say, the main elements of uh, success that we have identified looking at uh, uh, policies in several member states. Then there are some proposals that came from the European Economic and Social Committee, which is, as I said, uh, the body that represents civil society organizations. And we think the first element is a bigger involvement of family association in the moment in which you drawing up and you elaborate and you implement family policies. Because when you elaborate a policy, you must really know what the person that will receive it is expecting. So it's very important to us to really involve, be it at the national level, or at the EU level, or at the even local and regional level. Importance of involving family association. A second aspect, very important, especially at the, at the EU level, but not only, is the, what we call mainstreaming. The fact that uh, there's a lot of policies, of social policies, that have an impact on family. But sometimes they are not regarded, they are not devised as family policies, but they have an impact on it. So there should be a proper analysis made of all the, fam all the policy, social policies or even fiscal policies, for example, that can have an impact on families and that should be really studied with the impact studies, that's really both at European and national level. Uh, a third element that to, to us is, uh, is very important is the, the involvement as well of uh, social partners. This happens quite often at European level, but this should happen as well at the national and ag again at the local level. I'm thinking, for example, of a label for family-friendly businesses. This has been developed in Spain, in Germany. In Italy, there's a region very active on it, uh, which is the Veneto region. And we have s we've really seen that this is not so cost so costly for the budget of member states, but this can really be effective because you are really giving a, a family-friendly label to these f businesses that are really within their po internal human resources policies helping families. And that can really make a big change. And then finally, uh, something that is really very dear to our hearts is to give some kind of institutional visibility to the, to the family. And this can be made by two, two ways, I would say. The first one is by making 2014 European Year for Families at European level and at UN United Nations level. And that will be, of course, the celebration of the 20 years of the United Nations uh, Convention. So I think it's really important to really put the focus, the attention of media and of culture and of society on, on family. Uh, a last proposal, maybe by way of conclusions, is concerned uh, the possibility that uh, people could take uh, some years during their career life, they can take some years of uh, time out to deal and to care for their families, and then this would be treated like if it was a retirement. So it will be treated by the budget at national level as, as if it was a retirement, and of course that would imply a earlier retirement. But then that would be paid without much extra cost by the, by the budget that would avoid in that way to maybe pay for guardery, for crash, for care structures.
So we really think that should be something which should be at least studied to see the feasibility of it. But we, we do think that there's, a, there's room for that. As I was, I was saying, it's very important to know what parents, mother and father expect from, from us when we are thinking of policies to help them in being parents. And to this end, our research has been carried out uh, within the framework of Family Platform and uh, more specifically by the World Movement of Mothers among uh, 11,000 women, mothers, to ask them what they were expecting, what were their main problems, why they couldn't have more children than, as they, would, they said they wanted to have. And three main elements came out of, from this survey. The first one being the, the importance of balancing working and family life. The second one is, uh, as I was saying before, a more cultural element, the recognition of their role as a mother. Today we're just uh, talking about businessmen, businesswomen, but it's not so trendy to speak about mothers, about fathers, about parenting. And we do think that even this simple recognition that doesn't cost any money would really have a big impact on, on family and family well-being. And the third element is to have more time to spend for their children. We have seen that uh, in Netherlands, for example, they have much more uh, part-time, both for, parent, for men and women, uh, to look after their children. And it is really successful. It really, really made parents to have more children because they know they, they, will, they will be able to take care of them. So these, I would say, are three elements that really come out from the, from the final customers that are <laughs> among that are finally fathers and mother. Uh, again, on parenting, I think parenting is something very important. And it, I think it's not a coincidence that at EU level we are focusing more and more on parenting. There is a research which has just been published by the Eurofound, which is an EU agency dealing with the working and living condition. And it has suggested that more attention, more support should be given to to parents in their role of parenting, of being parents, because that seems easy and maybe in the past it was more than now. But there are things that you have to learn. I mean, you cannot just learn by doing. Of course, you do it by doing, but we do think that our, our formation, uh, training, uh, especially if it's, it is really tailored again on the parents' need, could really help parents in fulfill their role at the best, in the best way. Thank you.